I don't know if you would know about this, but in both states and in Canada, during the Second World War, anyone of Japanese descent was interned. <laughs> and so they were, um, they were, they had 24 hours. My mom, when she was three in 1942, uh, all the Japanese Canadians on the West Coast of Canada and also in the U.S. were given 24 hours to pack all their belongings up and they were put in internment camps for the duration of the war. So I remember going to the theater school. My dad drove me with the check in my hand and I had to decide, do you want to walk in the door and hand in your deposit check for theater school? Or do you want to go tear it up and go to university. And the day-to-day -day practice of being an actor means studying, taking care of yourself, getting rejected, auditioning, getting rejected again, getting rejected again, you know, having this great hope, maybe you'll get this thing, having a huge celebration because you got a part, and then kind of learn that, like there's just so many uh, pieces to it. And one of the big pieces is, even if you're a working actor, even if you're very lucky, is, is a lot of rejection. I was scared. I didn't know I knew how to do it. I, mm. I don't think there's enough credence or enough talking about the shock it is to become a parent. I mean, the way, the degree to which it changes your life. Now, mm. don't get me wrong. I, I tell my kids, like, I hope you have kids. It's like the, it's like the most transformative, you know, deep, powerful thing there is. I mean, you know, not, not that everyone should do it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, you know, I have a lot of friends who get upset when women say that, but or other people say that because maybe you don't want to have kids or maybe you can't have kids or, but you know, for me, um, it's a gift to have kids and it's transformative. But the reality is that we don't talk enough about how shocking the transition into being a parent is. And so the reason why I don't call it homeschooling is because like I say, we didn't stay home much and we weren't creating school at home. So when people hear homeschooling, what they think of is there's a mom sitting at the kitchen table with a math textbook and we're yeah. opening it to page 14 and doing page, and now we're gonna close it because now it's time for language arts. That's what we call school at home. And I did not do that because I wasn't interested in recreating school. I wanted something different for my kids. There are some challenges, there can be challenges to going outside of brick and mortar, regular traditional schooling, and that is it can be isolating. Even in our case, even with as many families as we have, the kids still don't have the same regularity as a common cohort every single day. And so one of the things I see changing now is this advent, this uh, uprising in um, incidents of what I call micro schools. And so, yeah, I went in to the studio and I asked all the questions and about the classes and, and I ended up. Uh, the story is like, you might remember the story that I tell is I bought a card of 10 lessons and I didn't use it for, until it was almost going to expire. <laughs> and then I, I, and then, so I forced myself to go back and I forced myself to pick a class. And, and I was telling the story in that talk about how part of my fear, part of the thing that kept me was this belief system that is in the back of my head. I don't think I was even conscious of it. That was like, oh, you're too old to do that. That's a sexy dance. That's, that's physically challenging. That's for young people. They all start when they're five years old. You're 49 and actually have this ring that symbolizes my commitment to spending a year changing the narrative on how our culture sees aging. And I believe that one of the most underutilized resources is people 50 and older. And I would even say specifically women even more so because there's been um, a lot, most, a lot of times women are the ones that have been doing the child raising, been doing the unpaid work. I realized that one of the things that can make us grow old, that keeps us from living a vibrant, youthful life as we age, is this idea of ossifying. And that's when you're trying to stay the same. That it's mm. actually growth and change that allows us to live vibrantly. And Waking at dawn, packing the gear.